you rarely make appearances anymore, okay? I get so nervous to make these kinds of videos. Well, actually, I haven't even made these kinds of videos in the past. I think this is, this is my second kind of call out video of a specific company. My last one was a couple years ago and it was for For You Flowers when they scammed me. So that was, you know, a fun time. You know, I talk about controversial stuff all the time. It's nothing new for my channel, but I do get nervous when it's like a very directed, specific type of video, like on one person or one company and it's just mm. especially since dolls kill has been known to hunt down negative content about them and get it taken down which is completely understandable because at the end of the day they're a business and they want to preserve their reputation and make more money but they're the ones really damaging the reputation right it's not the people making content about them because if you didn't do the things that we're making content about that your reputation wouldn't be tainted. So there's obviously a lot of videos on Dolls Kill already on YouTube. You can just type in either boycott Dolls Kill or Dolls Kill drama. I don't know. There's tons of videos already out there. So why am I making this one? Well, I do want to go over and kind of recap some of their past behaviors and bad things that they've done in the past. But also I want to talk about their responses to the George Floyd protests and the Black Lives Matter movement, as well as their recent apologies on Instagram. The first thing that I obviously want to point out is that I personally don't shop at Dolls Kill for the major reason that they're considered fast fashion. I gave up fast fashion over two years ago completely and Dolls Kill falls into that category. So that's the major reason why I personally don't shop there. If I did, I would not any longer because of their actions. But we've all known about these actions for quite a long time. I think it's just the recent stuff that has been done and said and they're weird apologies that are kind of waking more people up to the issues around Dolls Kill. Given that they're a fast fashion company also, I want to point out that there are plenty of reviews talking about how poor quality their clothing is, which is kind of absurd given the price point. They're kind of like mid-tier prices, but given that their quality should be mid-tier and it is not. So the first thing I want to talk about is probably what they're most famous for maybe is stealing art from smaller companies. I do want to point out that they are a retailer of many brands so they will purchase from other brands and then resell them on their site. Sometimes they bump up the cost, sometimes it's just at cost value. So a lot of times they are purchasing clothing from these other companies that have stolen art and putting them on their site. So sometimes they're probably not even aware that the companies they're buying from are stealing. However, there are plenty of examples of them stealing art for their in-house brand as well. So you can look on the hashtag boycott dolls kill on Instagram and you will see plenty of examples, but I'm just going to show you a couple of them. So you can see which examples are the dolls kill in-house brand and which are purchased from other retailers. So this one is current mood. I don't know what brand that is. So with this one, they actually customized and hand cut out and ironed on each individual letter. So the fact that this other company, current mood, ripped it off completely is so obvious. And I do think it does come down to Dolls Kill needed, needing to take responsibility when it comes to these kind of retailers that are ripping off smaller designs. This one is a famous example that you've probably seen before. This is actually stolen from a company called Sugar Pills. So the Sugar Pills retailer stole the design from this individual independent uh, artist and then Dolls Kill bought that product and sold it on their website. So Dolls Kill actually left a comment on this post and said, we don't steal designs, we are a retailer. They kind of addressed the fact that this isn't actually a Dolls Kill design that they made in a warehouse. It's actually from another store that they purchased from. But I do have an example of when they stole from a smaller artist or someone who has made this costume previously and used it for their in-house design. So this one is quite obvious that they ripped it off because this person has been making this costume since 2012 and two years ago the owner of Dolls Kill messaged them on Etsy asking if they could rush a Max costume out for her Halloween. And then two years later the company is ripping off the design. I don't know why 
companies are so blatant with some of their copying sometimes because I know this isn't the only instance or example of companies doing this where someone from the company will reach out or order something and then once they have it a couple years later or months later it's reproduced and sold on their website. So obviously that information has been around. You've probably seen those examples before, so I don't really need to get into further examples. There's so many out there if you just look at the hashtags or even Google it. And I'm not sure if there's more recent examples because these are all pretty old and well known. So I'm not sure if there's like more examples from recent years of them stealing or buying from retailers that are stealing. So next I wanna talk about some of the questionable items that they've sold on their website, starting with this one, which is a shirt that says dead girls can't say no, which is basically promoting rape culture. This shirt is also made by Sugar Pills, which is the company I mentioned before who stole art from a smaller artist. And I'm not sure the order of things of when they purchased the stolen art or when they decided to buy this, but clearly this company is a little bit problematic in itself and why Dolls Kill continues to purchase from them, I'm not sure. Again, this is kind of an old example, but still proves that they have questionable taste as far as what items they're willing to sell. So now we're gonna get into the racist and cultural appropriating clothing items that they have decided to sell in the past, including a shirt that says goth is white and a Native American headdress. So they did recently address both of these things, which is why I bring them up specifically, these two specific examples, because they addressed it recently, and I'm gonna talk about that apology. But first, the goth is white shirt is actually made by a company called WIA, and they released a statement that Dolls Kill then shared on the stories, on Instagram stories. Goth is white was supposed to suggests that goth is a lifestyle and it doesn't limit to black dress code. Asserting it is white on a black shirt was intended to create an ironic contrast between the meaning we had in mind and the color of the shirt. Note, the terms white and black only recall dress fabric colors and are in no way connected to skin color. This looked plain and simple to me. Was it silly? Maybe. Was it shallow? For sure. Fashion very often is, but it's absolutely insane saying it had a racist intent and that we are racists. Simply, we are not. Anybody can dislike our products and comment about it. They have all the right to do so and we accept it, but presuming by a fallacious and frankly absurd interpretation based on nothing, nothing, okay, that we convey racist messages and spreading this conclusion all over the internet is unfair and defamatory. WIA does fashion, speaks fashion, and loves fashion. WIA is open to any culture, opinion, and influence. This is what we are. Whoever wants to describe us either way, especially as racist, simply doesn't know us or is a hater. Peace. I have so many issues with this statement. Um, they're saying, basically implying that fashion, they do fashion, speak fashion, and love fashion. So therefore fashion has nothing to do with diversity, skin color, anything like that, which is completely false. <laughs> and I feel like they're shrugging off all responsibility to you just don't understand us, which is not how you make an apology or a statement. I don't, this isn't even an apology. It's just a statement regarding their shirt. It's yet another company stating, well, you didn't interpret our message properly. So you're just a hater instead of taking responsibility that maybe the shirt was a little tone deaf. Next problematic thing that they, sold in I think 2014 was a Native American headdress as part of their Halloween costume category on their website. So then this is their statement from 2014 when someone reached out to them saying that the headdress is cultural appropriation. Hey doll, the last thing dolls kill would be represent is racist. We love and value individuality and originality. Our company was created to represent dolls of all flavors. Excuse me guys are my cats. <laughs> All flavors, colors, ideals, etc. We're here for the misfits, miss legits, and everything in between. I'm sorry if that costume offended you, but to call us racist is pretty ridiculous. We're brassy, sassy, stick it up your assy kind of company. Thank you. Not for the easily offended norm culture clearly. So take a chill pill and get your panties out of a bunch because it ain't that serious cutie. That's not acknowledging anything. That's basically saying to fuck off, right? With your racist accusations. So that sounds very different to me from their statement that they released just, I think, a couple days ago, at least for when I'm filming this, regarding the goth is white shirt and the Native American headdress. So let's take a look at that statement. I want to quickly address some of the comments I'm seeing here on the statement. Um, the first issue I want to talk about is the goth is white t-shirt. 
which we sold um, by the European brand WIA. Um, this shirt said on the front, Goth is white. According to the brand, their intent was to say that Goths can wear any color and not just black. That's not how it was interpreted by the Dolls Kill community and we removed the product. After that experience, we put more controls in place to look at everything we sell with a critical eye. Um, the other issue I'd like to talk about is a Native American headdress, which we sold in 2014. This was a part of a much larger Halloween assortment. Um, it was culturally insensitive and inappropriate to sell. At the time, which is now more than six years ago, a customer service rep answered some complaints and one of them was answered pretty immaturely and it was pretty embarrassing. Um, looking at that now, we've grown so much. We probably had a handful of customer service reps back then and we made a mistake. Uh, we're sorry, we're learning, we're listening, and we're ready to be more transparent with you guys. Okay. Okay. Now, I personally am not a huge fan about how she apologized for it. She didn't really say much, I think. I'm glad that she at least addressed it. Oh, by the way, that is the founder of Dolls Kill. I just think that it didn't feel super genuine, her apology. And maybe it was, and she just is a little bit more uh, non-emotional of a person. I don't know. I don't want to, you know, judge her as a person. But the whole thing kind of was like, okay, I guess you addressed it. <laughs> Especially with the okay at the end. It just kind of felt like she was glad that it was over with now. Now they've addressed that separately from their main apology, which we'll get to, which is kind of a long one. It's like five minutes long, which we'll, we'll talk about it. <laughs> so they separately addressed the uh, culturally insensitive items that they have sold in the past and have yet to address the stolen artwork. So we'll see if that comes about because they did say that they want to be more transparent. They've yet to do so when I'm filming this video. Who's to say if they won't in the future? I don't know. Now let's address the lack of diversity amongst their models on their website. Now I believe that they have gotten better. I think it was a bigger issue a couple of years ago because if you look at their website now, they do have POC models and plus size representation on there. However, I do want to address something that was in Sleepy Flowers video, which I highly, highly recommend. Her video is great. It kind of dissects a couple other companies in addition to Dolls Kill on whether or not they are racist. So I'll link the video down below. Go watch it. So we talked about the tone deaf goth is white shirt and it kind of implying that you have to be white to be goth, which is an absurd idea, but also a big issue in the goth community. So they did defend it. They deleted the item. However, why is it then when you go to the goth section, which is under Mercy Doll, they have like different dolls. If you go to the Mercy Doll, um, which is kind of their more goth section, there are only white models. Maybe it's a coincidence and it's not intentional. Maybe these items are older. I don't know, but I think it's a bad look, especially when they've sold something in the past that literally said goth is white. Maybe the intentions were misinterpreted from that brand, but they saw that item at some point and said, we want to sell that. So how Dolls Kill interpreted it, we don't really know. But by not including POC models in your goth section, it's not even labeled goth, so maybe it's a stretch. You tell me if this is reaching, I don't know. Are they then not further perpetuating this idea that in order to be goth, you have to be super pale? Now they might be more inclusive than before, but that doesn't necessarily extend to their employees. Now this is all alleged because it's all based Based on other statements about this, but there are reviews from past employees on Glassdoor. This person said this was posted in 2017, horrific, ignorant management that doesn't care to learn anything from employees with experience. Croinism, I don't know what that is to be honest. <laughs> Abides here as does hypocrisy unless you are white or light-skinned Asian, prepare to be fired at some point. Again, all alleged, all in someone else's words, not mine. Just stay away at all costs, insulting pay, feels like high school, corrupt owners and managers, treated like garbage unless you are best buddies with the owner. There was kind of a theme amongst some of the 
reviews that I was reading regarding working there. Like this one says, only praise for premeditated favorites. You could break your back working hard and they will still find something wrong with it and praise people who never work or barely work as hard because they're cool with them or friends. And there's also been other stories that have come out, again, all alleged because I can't confirm with them or, you know, I haven't talked to them directly about their experiences, but there was someone who came forward who said that they are trans and they were asked to model, I believe, for Dolls Kill and then were made fun of the whole time when they were trying to work for them. And then there is this case, which you might have heard of in the past, where someone was offered a Dolls Kill partnership for promotion to, you know, send clothes, post online kind of thing. And then when they found out they were in a wheelchair, they rescinded the offer. And then later it goes on to say in another tweet that they claimed that the promotion was full, but then proceeded to reach out to friends of this person. Also, they will fire slash not hire anyone from the sex work industry, even though they profit off of that community significantly. Okay, so that's all kind of stuff that they've done in the past. You've probably heard about in the past. Things These things are pretty well known, but I just wanted to give a recap of everything. So we're all caught up here. But now let's talk about the founders posts during the protests and their apology afterwards. So the first instance of them speaking up about the protests before the black square, before any kind of statement was this post posted by the founder of Dolls Kill, and it is a riot police crew in front of a Dolls Kill store with a caption that says, direct action in its glory, hashtag Black Lives Matter. Now with this photo and the caption together, it kind of implies that she is on the side of the police but then later claims that she's not, and she just thought this photo was impactful, which we'll get to the apology. But why would you say direct action in its glory with a photo of police? if that's not what you meant. <laughs> now, the LA location of Dolls Kill was actually vandalized during the protest, as you can see here, and she posted a photo on her story that just said sick on it, which I think is understandable for her to be upset about her business and her company being vandalized. I get it, it's her thing, you know? I do think it's funny that someone wrote fuck fast fashion. So people were clearly upset about her posting this photo of the cops and everything, so she then later deleted it, and then the main Instagram page of Dolls Kill posted the infamous Black Square. And then they posted a statement later, which I'm not gonna read the entire thing, I think it's still up on their Instagram page, but their last slide of it says, we will do whatever we can as a brand to hold ourselves accountable. Dolls Kill is committing $1 million to purchase products from Black-owned fashion brands and designers to feature on our site. Please suggest your favorite brands in our comments below, or comment section. We will donate a portion of the proceeds to Black Lives Matter. So they then admitted that they were actively not purchasing products from Black-owned companies to begin with, and then stating that they will then donate a portion of these proceeds from just the black owned companies to Black Lives Matter. Why not just donate the whole million that you're gonna spend on black owned companies? Why not just start a process in your buying for Dolls Kill? Just buying from, like, seek out some black owned companies. And also asking people to list their favorites is lazy. Do the research, look it up. Just create a new practice where you start being more aware and start buying intentionally from black owned companies and then donate the million dollars to Black Lives Matter. To say that you're gonna donate a portion of the proceeds from just the black owned companies from your site that you're now gonna post because you're investing a million dollars is backwards to me. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> they don't specify how much they're actually going to be donating, like what the percentage is. It could be like 2% for all we know, but they're a well-off brand. They're you know committing to a million dollars to support black owned companies, which that's cool, but why don't you just donate the million to Black Lives matter since you have it in your budget and then just start you know actively just continuously purchasing from black owned brands i don't understand why that's so difficult and they have to just keep the black owned companies and the donations for black lives matter separate from everything else on their website maybe i'm being nitpicky and i don't want to discredit any donations that are being made towards the black lives matter movement because everything is important and everything adds up but the way this is the fact that they have a history of kind of coming across racist let's be real and and I just don't think it's good enough for them. Also, if you look at their um, Instagram page, they have a link to 
Black Lives Matter, you know, like a resource link that takes you directly to their website, which, you know, the, the page on their website is full of resources. Great, thank you. But also you get like a little pop up, say 20% or whatever, you know, it's like encouraging you still to shop on their website. Like you can't be selfless for once. It doesn't involve you. Please just post a normal resource website that people are sharing and not one that takes you directly to your website. So since none of these things that they were doing to kind of help better their reputation, it wasn't going to fix anything that they've done in the past or the posts that are in poor taste, Shoddy Lynn, the founder, decided to make a five minute apology video posted onto Doll's Kill. So let's take a look at that video. I might edit it or speed it up or something because it's a long video. Hi, I'm Shoddy Lynn. I'm the founder of Dolls Kill. I started Dolls Kill to create a place where the misfits, the underserved, the crazy ones, the ones that don't dress like everybody else and look like everybody else and act like everybody else could come together and celebrate diversity. This is the first time I'm publicly associating myself with the brand. I always felt that you, the Dolls Kill community, is so much louder and more powerful than me as one person. I am here today to apologize for the damage and the pain that my actions caused you, the Dolls Kill community. I did something that hurt people. I was not trying to do that. I wanna to talk to you about that today. I received a photo on Saturday, which I posted on my personal Instagram page, which showed a slew of riot cops in front of the Dolls Kill store in Los Angeles. I want to be clear, I did not call the riot cops. This image was powerful and to me it represented a revolutionary moment in time. I've always been strongly connected to anarchist beliefs and ideals, and I strongly believe in direct action, which is civil disobedience. Meaning do whatever the fuck you want that makes you feel like you're making a change, making a difference, being heard. That was the message I was trying to send. The photo did not convey the support and solidarity I was trying to express. Knowing what I know now, it was insensitive. It totally missed the mark. It was tone deaf. It was wrong. And for that, I'm truly sorry. It was never my intention to cause any pain, disrespect, or lack of support for the movement. I want to be clear. I do not condone racism, police brutality, bigotry. I do not condone hate. I support the Black Lives Matter movement. I support everybody out there protesting, rioting, doing whatever the fuck you want to make yourself heard and to feel like you're a part of this movement. Do it. That's your right. We have made mistakes in the past. Nobody's perfect, but we're going to talk about them. We're going to be much more transparent. You have my word that if we ever fuck up in the future, we'll own up to it. I recognize that Dolls Kill needs to be part of the solution. We will do better. We will no longer be silent. I started Dolls Kill to bring together people of all shapes, colors, size, opinions, identities, whatever. There is not a more important time for us to do that than right now. In this moment, our focus should be on the black community and in doing everything we can to not only show our support, but to be part of the solution. I commit to you that we will fight for what's right and will take action to create long-lasting changes. 
So there is the apology slash statement from the founder. Now, I don't think this is sitting well with a lot of people. Um, for one, the format of it just felt off. I know people have pointed out that it looks like she's reading from cue cards or something, uh, the way she pauses a lot. She's probably under a lot of stress, so I understand the kind of awkwardness, the pauses, and wanting to read something off to make sure you don't miss anything or, you know, make sure you're saying it correctly. But at the same time, it should be genuine. And I don't know, it just didn't feel that genuine. And they have, like I said, addressed two issues of the racist items that they have sold in the past. They haven't yet addressed anything else as of right now. I don't know if they will ever address the stolen art or anything like that. Companies and influencers are now distancing themselves with the Dolls Kill and companies are no longer selling to them. Influencers are no longer wanting to work with them, which I think is good. I think they need a reality check here and I'm sure that this was just kind of the last straw for a lot of people. If you guys have any individual experiences with Dolls Kill, I'd love to hear your experiences down in the comments. Um, that's basically it for this video and everything that I've kind of compiled that they've done in the past. If I'm missing anything or you want something to be pointed out more, please leave it in the comments as well. And check out other people's videos. I'm sure they're much more thorough and in-depth than mine, especially if you want more in-depth details about their past and stuff like that. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will talk to you soon. Bye.